everybody this is lesson two of our beginner course for people who have never done Pilates before we've done lesson one already hopefully you've caught that if you feel you need to repeat that once we've done today's if you think it's a bit too much please do you can do it as many times as you like before moving on to this one so we're going to recap slightly a little bit from what we did from lesson one so standing with your feet hip width distance apart so if necessary feet together open the heels open the toes so getting your heels directly underneath your hips knees soft and stand nice and tall imagine a piece of string pulling you from the top of your head up towards the ceiling and wiggle the fingers and toes a couple of shoulder shrugs to take your shoulders back and down imagine you're putting your shoulder blades into your back pockets bringing your pelvis into neutral Remember, tilting your pelvis backwards and forwards, gradually reducing the two movements until you find the midpoint. So you're looking for your hip bones and pubic bone to be level, forming that natural curve in your lower back. So to hold that position, draw your tummy in as tight as you can. Remember your belt, you're going to fasten it to the 10th hole. Release it halfway and then just a tiny bit more, so taking it to about a 30% position. Same with the pelvic floor, I'm going to squeeze front and back passages as tight as you can to lift the pelvic floor as high as it will go to the 100% position. Drop it down halfway and then a tiny bit more to take it again to roughly a 30% position. Now to the breathing, so try and keep those in place, hands onto the ribs, fingertips touching. Take a deep breath in, Allowing the air to fill the lungs, open the ribs as you breathe out, feeling the ribs close. And again, breathing in and out. Try and keep those deep breaths going, although I will remind you, relax your arms down and just take a few seconds to stand tall, allowing your spine to lengthen and your shoulders to relax. Keeping your knees soft, your pelvis in neutral, Gently turn the head from side to side. Moving slowly within your comfort range. And then back to the center. Dropping the chin to the chest. Drawing it back up. Okay, down again. And back up. Moving into the shoulders. So rolling the shoulders both together and changing direction so squeezing the shoulder blades together adding the arms breathing in and out so big circles moving within your comfort range but trying to move as you breathe tummy in to keep the body as still as possible change direction so breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth breathe in and out keep the knees soft and the shoulders down don't let them end up around your ears so trying to wear them as earrings keep them back and down last one bring the hands to your thighs into a little side bend so sliding the hand down the leg and back up repeat to the other side tilting the head gently towards the shoulder to create a little bit more movement into your spine try and avoid pushing your hip out as you side bend try and just work from the waist so you're keeping your pelvis still imagining your legs are stuck in concrete and back up to the center Okay, let's twist. So again, keep your knees soft, hip bones facing forward, hands out, and twist very gently. Remember, your twisting is not massive. You're just trying to move from the waist. So it's the ribs and the shoulders that are turning. Take the head with it. Breathe out as you twist. So remember, we're breathing out on movement, in as you straighten. Last two, last one, and back to the center. 
lovely okay hands to the hip bones as you put your hands on your hips I want you to be aware of whether your pelvis is rocking as we do your little knee bends so lengthening up through the spine keep your shoulders above your hips tummy in breathe in as you breathe out bend your knees push them over the toes breathe in as you straighten being aware as to whether you can feel your pelvis rocking forward and back as you bend and straighten the legs so you've got to use these core muscles pull in gently to keep the pelvis as level as you can tailbone tucked under so not sticking your bum out behind you so we don't want that movement practice in front of a mirror if you're not sure now to add variety turn it out so taking the feet wide you've then rotated the legs within the hips the toes are going out to the side a little bit harder bend your knees and straighten breathing out as you bend in as you straighten so from the side again keeping your shoulders and hips in line these don't need to be massive remember these are just your warm-up exercises to get movement into the major joints hips knees and ankles and back up okay down to the feet so we're going to finish off your warm-up with the heel raises hands on the hips to help you to balance remember these don't need to be massive if you need to hang on to something please do breathe in lift your heels and breathe out lower aim the top of your head up towards the ceiling now these don't need to be massive all we're trying to do is to mobilize all the little joints in your feet to help strengthen your feet and ankles but it's important that you try and keep them in alignment so watch the ankles don't roll as you lift your heels so that we're strengthening the muscles in the correct position last one and then relax give the legs a bit of a shake so moving into your roll downs feet parallel knees soft tummy in take a breath in as you breathe out drop your chin to the chest and slowly bend take your time let your head hang let your arms relax and hang and just literally go as far as you can breathe in at the bottom long breath out use your tummy now if it's a little bit tight in the back just bend your knees a bit more Focus on rebuilding your spine slowly. Relax the shoulders, lift the chin. Breathe in and repeat. Slow but controlled. If struggling, you can rest the hands on the thighs and just literally go to the point that feels manageable. So you may only get to there, that's okay. Breathe in, breathe out, use your tummy. So pull in gently to draw yourself slowly back up lifting the head right at the end into your next one so chin to the chest slowly bend you might find you get a little further with each one or each time you do your session but it doesn't matter if you don't it's not a race it's not a competition we're not trying to get as far as possible it's all about listening to your own body and feeling how good it is to move relax the shoulders lift the chin okay last one this time we're going to add your hamstring stretch so find a point that's comfortable to hold stay there straighten the legs and then just relax into that stretch letting your head hang let your arms relax and hang and just breathe nice deep breath looking to feel the stretch of the back of your legs so bending your knees walk the hands forward and come down onto your mat onto hands and knees so the hands are underneath the shoulders knees are underneath your hips so you're forming that nice solid tabletop shape we're going to do a little bit of the swimming in this position that we did yesterday have i got room yes i have so tummy in breathe in as you breathe out slide lift one leg opposite arm breathe in replace and change sides now i know you'll want to watch but try not to try and just listen to my instructions so that you're keeping your head in the right position 
looking down towards the floor between your thumbs. It is so tempting to lift your hand and follow the hand with your eyes. Try and avoid that as you put pressure into the back of your neck. Keep your chin tucked in, look straight down at the floor. Alternatively, there is a temptation to look at your knees, but try not to. But be aware of where your knees are as they come back onto the mat. Now, we're going to add a progression today. See if you can hold that up position for a round of breaths without wobbling. Coming back down on your second breath in and repeat. Hold, not too high, watch for the shoulder dropping, try and keep it level. Breathe in and out and then back down on your second breath in. Keep going. Use your tummy muscles, you have no option really otherwise you'll wobble. So if you do find you're very wobbly, you've probably let go of your core so pull in gently you are fighting against gravity your tummy obviously wants to drop try and keep pulling your navel up towards your spine remember that 30 percent position though not too tight now let's go for one more on the opposite side hold breathe in and out and back down on the second breath in Relax into child pose. So open the knees, toes together, hips down and lower the head. Remember it's important that you push your hips to the heels rather than put your head on the floor. This is where you want to feel that stretch in child pose. If you can do both like this, go for it. But I'd rather you were pushing your hips down than trying to put your head on the floor. It's getting that stretch into the lower back that's the important bit. Breathe while in child pose and breathe into the ribs. Okay, coming forward onto your tummy. So we did diamond press in our lesson one. We're going to repeat diamond press. This time we're going to challenge you a little bit more. So overlapping the fingers or putting your hands in that diamond shape, head onto the fingers, flattening yourself to the mat, then bring your legs tight together. Engage your tummy, squeeze your buttocks, breathe in. As you breathe out, light pressure through the floor, through your hands, lift your chest, head and shoulders. Hold, breathe in and breathe out lower. And repeat. Now as you lift and hold, keep your chin tucked in, focus on where the shoulders are. Don't let them end up around your ears. Hold, breathe in. And breathe out lower. If you want to make it harder, imagine your hands are stuck to your forehead. As you lift the chest, lift the hands. Hold, breathe in. Breathe out lower. Personally, I find that quite tough. Try again though. Squeeze your bum, tummy in, breathe in. Breathe out, lift. Hold. Two more if you can. Keep squeezing. Watch where the shoulders are. Don't let them end up around your ears. Last one. And then relax. Whew. Quite tough that one. Let's stay in this position. To work the legs. If you do need a stretch though, please free to have a cat stretch or a child pose, but we're going to move straight into prone leg lift if possible. Again, adding a progression. So, tummy in, squeeze your bum, breathe in. As you breathe out, lift just one leg, breathe in lower and change. Keep alternating left and right. Remember, your focus is to keep your pelvis as still as possible. If it's still nipping in the lower back, hands underneath your hips to angle the pelvis posteriorly, tilting it away from the floor to make your glutes work. So 
going right into here takes the pressure off your lower back to make it harder lift both legs together same breathing out as you lift in as you lower be aware of what your pelvis is doing don't let it rock forward to press your tummy into the mat keep pulling your navel up towards your spine and two more last one and rest release your back push up onto hands and knees into cat stretch so arching the spine tucking in the chin and your tailbone slowly take the stretch the other way letting the tummy drop lift the chin look up arching again nice big stretch and one more time let the tummy drop and look up and relax lovely let's get you over onto your back so just very carefully turn yourself over and lower yourself down onto the mat remember using a block or a folded towel or small cushion behind your head if you need to if you feel that your chin is sticking up like this you need something underneath the back of your head checking that you're in neutral so slide the shoulders back and down have a feel hip bones and pubic bones should be level a little hollow in the small of the back few pelvic tilts if you need to to make sure you're neutral remember we don't want the pelvis tilting to flatten the lower back we want it to come up a little bit away from the floor but you should feel your sacrum which is that flat triangular bit at the bottom of your spine connecting with the floor watch your feet are not tucked in too close do see that a lot make sure your feet are well away from your hips so you have roughly a 90 degree angle in the back of your knees it's easier to maintain neutral if the feet are away from your hips okay just a couple of deep breaths we're going to go into the 100 we're going to try two legs today if you still need to just do one at a time please do so relaxing the hands by your sides this time shoulders relaxed breathe in engage your tummy as you breathe out lift one leg into tabletop hold if you can bring the other leg up beside it and breathing in and out so breathe in two three four five and out two three four five so breathe slowly use your fingers to count your breaths ten maximum if you do start to shake or tremble put one foot down It's halfway if you're breathing with me breathing in and out pressing the ribs down into the mat particularly if it starts to nip in your lower back try and get these abdominals to work last three breaths watch the knees are not creeping try and keep the knees above your hips one more if you can and then come down gently one foot at a time always stretch the legs out flex the feet take your arms over your head and stretch pull up the toes push your back into the floor as you stretch feeling that stretch go down through your tummy okay let's roll onto your side revisiting your side kick so coming up onto the bony part of the hip use your arm as a pillow remember you can bend the arm to cradle your head or you can have your head on a block hand on the floor in front so engage your tummy muscles breathe in as you breathe out lift the top leg hip height if you can lift the other leg up beside it hold and breathe 
deep breaths. Focus on the stretch as if trying to open up the space between the ribs and your hips. So you're lengthening and stretching through both legs away from you. Progression for side kick. If you can, take your supporting hand to your thigh. Now this is where you, where you may well roll forward. Concentrate. Pull in. Use your pelvic floor. That makes a big difference to the balance for this exercise. If you've got that far, see if you can take the arm over your head. Rest it towards the other hand. You could bring the hands together or you can just lengthen and stretch through that arm, having your hands shoulder width distance apart. Toes together. Again, focus on the stretch at your waist. And breathe. Keep stretching, keep lengthening, keep pulling in. Checking that both legs are still in the air. And then slowly bring the arm back to your thigh. Replace it to the mat and lower the legs down gently. Bend that top leg forward into recovery position, giving the hip a rub if you need to. And then we finish with a quad stretch. It's not the release stretch for side kick. It's just a good place to do it as it's easier. You don't have to worry about balancing. And I find it much easier to do than lying on my front as I have long body, short legs and short arms. I can't reach. So I find this much easier way of doing it. And you still get the stretch. And release. Now we're going to do an exercise on your back next. So rolling back onto your back, flock underneath your head if you need it. Get yourself back into neutral. So we're going to add a new exercise today. This is called a one leg circle. Ideally, once you're in that neutral position, rest your hands on your hip bones. Your pelvis this time will want to rock from side to side as you circle your leg. So we're just going to do it in a low level position, which is the tabletop again knee above the hip, shin parallel to the ceiling. If you find your leg feels really heavy and you struggle, you could put your hand onto the knee to guide the leg round. What we're trying to do is to rotate the thigh within the hip. So circling the leg within the hip as if drawing a circle on the ceiling with your kneecap. Don't make the circle too big, otherwise your pelvis will rock. So the tendency is one to do that, but see how everything moves. Keep it tiny, tiny. Small control circles. The smaller the circle, the slower you move, the deeper the muscles you get in touch with. And change direction. Try and make it a lateral circle so you're taking the leg away from the centre of the body, not crossing it over towards the supporting leg. You should start to feel it working into your thigh. And then replace the foot down. You might want to stretch it out, give it a roll. Let's repeat with the other leg. So lift into tabletop. Use your hand if you need to, or do it free. Circle the leg round. Again, tiny little circles. This is your focus. Keep your pelvis as still as you can as you circle the leg. Shoulders nice and relaxed, body still. Breathe through it. You can breathe in as the circle comes in, out as the circle goes out, if you want to. But as I say, this level, don't worry too much about the breathing. Change in direction. Just make sure you don't hold your breath. Try and focus the breath into the ribs as you circle the legs. And replace it down. Well done. Just stretch your legs out. Give them a rub. Now rolling onto the other side for your side kick. Ideally, you would just roll onto the other side. So you're looking away from the screen. However, I'm going to swap ends of the mat just to show you so that you can still see me and I can see the camera. You might want to do the same. We're ideally looking for a flowing movement with as little changing round as possible. So it would be best to turn over, but I say the choice is yours. So check your position right up onto the hip. 
stack the joints, hips, knees and ankles. Use your arm as a pillow, cradling the arm, cradling the head if you want to. Your choice. Hand on the floor in front. So, tummy in, gauge your pelvic floor, breathe in as you breathe out, lift the top leg, hip height. Then bring the other one up beside it. Lengthen and stretch through both legs and hold and breathe. Taking the supporting hand, if and when you can, to your thigh. Hold. Now see if you can take that arm up over your head. Lengthen and reach it away from you. You could bring the hands together by lifting the bottom hand up. Keep the toes together, keep stretching. Or you could keep that arm on the floor, but stretch through the top arm, keeping your hands shoulder width. Try and line everything up, pointing the toes, watch out for cramp, use your tummy, use your pelvic floor, and breathe. Slowly float the hand back, bring it back to your thigh, replace it to the mat and lower the legs down gently. Bend the top leg forward into recovery position. Again, give it a rub if you need to. I always find it tighter on the right side, so need a bit of a rub. Quad stretch at that point. Again, remember if you can't reach your foot, bend your knee, press it back behind you. This is where you want to feel the stretch. <coughs> Try and avoid having the knee forward. Try and press it back behind you. And then relax. Well done, roll back onto your back. Your release stretch for your side kick is a knees to chest stretch. So hug the knees in tight, lifting the head and shoulders. If it's okay for your neck, if it, you have neck problems or it hurts your neck, keep your head down. And then bring the feet back down to the floor. So, coming back into your base position, shoulders back and down, resting the hands on the floor this time. We're going to start with a single leg stretch. As you've not covered that one yet, we're going to start it at the low level. Single leg stretch at this level is about coordination and learning how to keep your spine in neutral when lying on the floor. So you want to be aware that you've got the little hollow in the small of your back and your pelvis is level. We'll start with the legs, then we'll add the arms. So concentrate on your pelvis, tummy in, breathe in. As you breathe out, just lift and extend one leg. Breathe in, bend your knee, replace it to the mat and change sides. Trying not to let your pelvis wobble. Your instinctive reaction as you put the foot down is to relax your core. Keep the focus here. Keep pulling in gently throughout. Aim your legs to about a 45 degree angle and point your toes. So you're creating the stretch. Remember the exercise is single leg stretch or one leg stretch, whichever. Breathe out as you lift and extend. Breathe in as you replace. Now when you're happy with the leg movement, let's try adding an arm. It is ideally opposite arm to legs. As you lift the leg, lift your arm. Stretch the leg as you take the arm over your head. And bring them back together. And change. Don't worry whether the arm reaches the floor or not. Just take the arm over your head. Your focus is here. As you take arm and leg away, your spine will want to lift away from the mat. Try and pull your navel in and keep your ribs connecting with the mat. So not lifting. So keeping the body as still as you can. Imagine you're balancing a glass of wine on each hip bone. You might start off doing the same arm, same leg. That's okay, go with it. If you do, you'll eventually learn the coordination to do opposite arm and leg. I love this exercise. This is a great exercise if you do suffer with a sore back. 
It helps strengthen your core, takes the pressure off your back. As I said in lesson one, when you're in this position, your spine is totally protected. So it's a perfect exercise to do if you have spinal stenosis or any arthritis within your spine or even damaged vertebrae. Okay, let's just go for two more. You could easily do it for five minutes, but your focus, don't let your mind wander, is your core, keeping this bit under control. Lovely, have a stretch when you're done. Love that, feel so good after it. Pull the toes towards your arms and over your head and stretch. Okay, bending the knees again. Now, we're going to move into hip rolls. This time, bring your feet and knees together, arms out to the side. Pressing your ribs down into the floor. Engage your tummy. Breathe in as you breathe out. Gently let your knees roll to one side, allowing the hip to lift, but not your ribs. Breathe in, breathe out, slowly return. And repeat to the other side. Chin lightly tucked in. Keep lengthening through the back of your neck and relax your shoulders. So just letting the body move from the waist. Remember it's a tiny movement, 10 to or 10 past on the clock face. Now if you want to make this a little bit more challenging, you could lift one leg. So say you lift your right leg, roll both legs to the left. Then use your inner thighs and your left leg to push your right leg back replace to the mat and change. So lift your left leg, keep your knees tight together, roll both legs to the right, use your right inner thigh and push the left leg back. Keep going. Again, just focusing on moving from the waist. So this is where you should be feeling it. The muscles around your ribs will engage as you press your ribs down to keep your upper body still. And I can feel it working quite nicely around here as I move. Use your inner thighs, use your pelvic floor to press your leg back to the start position. Let's do one more time. Get a bit like single leg stretch. Do as many repetitions as you like with that one. It's a nice one to do. When you're finished, we're going to do a lovely stretch, which is just to roll both knees to the mat and turn the head the opposite way. Come back to the centre and repeat to the other side. This time we're letting the knees flop, we're letting the hips lift, the ribs lift, turning the head the opposite way. So it's like we've wrung your body out. Getting a lovely stretch. And then come back to the centre. Okay, arms down by your side. Take your feet back to hip width distance. We're going to move into the last exercise for today, which is your shoulder bridges again. So we're just going to repeat what we did in lesson one, starting with your little pelvic tilt. Beg your pardon, you need the feet together, knees slightly apart. So breathing in, tilt the pelvis, press your lower back into the floor, squeeze your bum, lift your hips, two finger widths, breathe in, push your lower back in, roll your pelvis back to neutral. So it's all about the pelvic tilt. As you tilt, stretch in the lower back, squeeze and lift, not too high, remember it's just the pelvis, not the ribs, press your lower back in, and rock your pelvis back to neutral. And again, tilt, squeeze and lift. Breathe in, rock your pelvis back to neutral. One more time, tilt, squeeze, breathe in, breathe out, rock back. Now take your feet back to hip width distance. We're gonna do a full bridge this time. So breathing in, tilt the pelvis, push your lower back into the mat. This time squeeze your buttocks, lift your hips as you peel your spine up into bridge. Come up as high as you can, hold. Breathe in, breathe out, roll your spine down slowly. One vertebrae at a time. 
pressing your lower back into the mat and rolling your pelvis back to neutral and repeat so breathe in tilt squeeze your buttocks breathe out lift the hips peeling your spine slowly away from the floor when you're in the up position press firmly through both feet push away into the knees as you press your hips up breathe in breathe out roll back down slowly imagine you have two pieces of string attached to the hips pulling your pelvis to the ceiling and again breathing in squeeze and lift up push the hips push into your knees push your hips up press down through the feet and roll back down slowly pressing your lower back into the floor and back to neutral let's go for one more if you can so tilt peel up and hold breathe in breathe out roll down slowly one vertebrae at a time. Think of your back like a bicycle chain. Get as much movement into the spine as you can. Flatten the lower back into the floor and roll back to neutral. We're going to finish this with a hip flexor stretch. Draw one knee into the chest, grab hold of it and slide the other leg out, flexing the foot on the extended leg and hold. And breathe nice deep breaths as you hold your stretches remember to try and breathe as much as possible you need lots of oxygen into the body to get the oxygen into the muscles while you're stretching change legs and repeat on the other side flexing the foot so you're pulling the toes towards your knee Feeling the stretch into the calf, this is quite nice if you're prone to cramp. To get that flexion into the ankle, pull the toes towards you, will release the cramp in the hamstrings and the calf. And then relax. Inner thigh stretch, bring the soles of the feet together, let your knees drop one to each side. And relax. Just be aware you're not arching your spine. Let the weight of your knee joints stretch your inner thighs. And really holding the stretches for about 20 seconds. 20 to 30, no more than 30 is necessary. If there's a stretch you enjoy, then go for the 30. and bring your knees back together. Last stretch, which is your piriformis stretch. If you pop your right foot onto your left knee, again, you can just push that knee away with your right hand, or you could put both hands through behind your left thigh and gently pull the leg towards your left shoulder. And hold and breathe. There is a tendency to want to twist by pulling the knee across. Try and pull it towards the shoulder You'll feel a stretch into the hamstrings as well as into the hip, if you do. If you can't quite get there yet, don't worry, it will come, just takes practice. And then change legs. So again, easy option, left foot onto the right knee, push your left knee away with your left hand. Harder option, both hands behind and pull the right knee towards your right shoulder. Trying to relax the shoulders, head on the floor if possible, or on your block. Oh, that's good. Feel that go right down into here. And then relax, bring your feet back to the floor. So just taking your feet a little bit wider, rest the hands on the hips. We're going to relax for a few minutes. If you want to, close your eyes. And take a nice deep breath in. As you breathe out, relax completely and sink down 
into the floor. Breathe normally now. Try not to control your breath, but being aware of your breath going in and out. Letting your head gently roll from side to side. Squeezing the shoulder blades together and then letting them go. Relaxing your thigh, the, your shoulders, your arms, your hands, and your fingers. Squeeze your buttocks together and then let them go. Relaxing your thighs, your calves and your feet. Deep breaths, but breathing normally. And with a nice big sigh, let yourself sink down into the floor. You can stay here as long as you like, but when you're ready to move, make sure you wiggle your fingers and toes just to let your brain know that you're going to move and stretch. So whatever stretch feels good. I like a full body stretch, but we're all different. Do what feels comfortable. And then taking your time, roll onto your side. Push yourself up into a sitting position. If you're a little bit lightheaded, sit still for a minute or two. Have some water near you, have a drink of water before getting up. Well done everybody, I hope you've enjoyed lesson two, a few progressions there. If you found it a little bit too tough, you might want to go back to lesson one again, repeat it a couple of times. You might find that doing this in the evenings before you go to bed will allow you to have the best night's sleep of the week. It's very relaxing. Thanks everybody, see you in lesson three. Bye!